Good evening, Wind First Assembly. Join us in worship.
and your kids involved during this time. Pastor Jonathan hosts a Zoom meeting every Wednesday night at 6.30 for the WFA students. You can access that link at the WFA students Facebook page every Wednesday night at 6.30. Also, Pastor Samantha posts a brand new service for the kids every Sunday morning and every Wednesday night to help keep them connected to the Word. Um, you can access that link at WFA Kids Facebook page or you can find either link on the WFA Like page. If you would like to keep your students and your children involved in other ways, please contact the church at 1-870-238-7442. We can put you in direct contact with Pastor Jonathan and Pastor Samantha and keep you informed of any events or contacts that are going on. Also, I want to give you three different ways that you can give of your tithe and offering during this time. The first way is to text the word GIVE to the number at the bottom of your screen. The information will pop up on your phone and it's very self-explanatory. The second way is you can go to www.wfaliving.com and there's a link to GIVE on the website. Also, you can mail your tithe and offering to P.O. Box 1085 in Wynn, Arkansas. Let's go to the Word together. Hey, Win First Assembly, it's good to see you tonight. I'm so glad that you've come and joined us. Uh, I want to just say thank you so much for your faithfulness and giving to the Lord. I just appreciate that so much, and I know the Lord is pleased as well. If you want to, you can give your tithes and offering tonight by texting the word GIVE to the number at the bottom of your screen, or you can go to our website, and go, which is www.wfaliving.com, and go to the giving portion of that website. Follow all the promptings there and you'll be able to process your tithes and offerings. Or if you'd like to send them to our P.O. Box 1085 Win, Arkansas, we'll be happy to receive your offerings there as well. Thank you so much. I pray that you are blessed and safe and healthy today. Turn with me, if you will, to Jonah chapter 2. Jonah chapter 2, starting with verse 1 through 9. <clears throat> We're going to finish our uh, series in great prayers in the Old Testament tonight. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. I pray that it's been something that you can glean from and, and implement within your own prayer life. Some of these different prayers that we have found in, uh, in, in these last several weeks. Jonah chapter 2, starting with verse 1, says, Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you have heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the sea, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows uh, passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight, yet I shall look again upon your holy temple. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds are wrapped around my head and the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought me, yet you brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was fainting away, I remember the Lord, and my prayer came to you in your holy temple. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would just wrap your arms of love and your presence around us today in our homes as we are watching this video, as we are gathering together in your word, I pray, Father, that in our times of stress and our times of testing and trouble, that you'll meet us and that you'll deliver us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to share with you tonight about the prayer for, uh, the prayer for deliverance from trouble. You see, the key verse of this 
final message in this series we find in chapter 2, of, uh, verse 1 of Jonah. In chapter 1, we read a sad recording of the prophet's disobedience and his doubt in the Lord. And uh, uh, because of the consequence, trouble fell upon the prophet. <clears throat> you see, it was after this and only when he was in real trouble, he prayed to the Lord. He called out to God. You see, we all experience trouble in our life. There are those that just, the storms of life just pop up. And then there are other times where uh, uh, life, we, we cause the, the turmoil and the troubles in our lives. But just because you are a Christian does not make you immune to troubles. In fact, because we are Christians at times, ensures that trouble is going to come our way. Look what Philippians chapter 1 verse 29 says, For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake. We also see in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 7 that the Apostle Peter says, So that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes through it is tested by fire, or though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Our faith will be tested by trials and tribulation and distress at times. But there are times, because of our own folliness, because of our own sin and rebellion, trouble comes our way. And this was the case for Jonah. Jonah allowed this moment, this heartbreaking moment, to, uh, to come into his life. So let's use this misfortune uh, of Jonah to learn from him and to learn from the prayer of calling upon the Lord in time of trouble. So I want you to notice this at first, that gr Jonah had great trouble. You see, if you read through chapter 1 of Jonah, and, and you read it carefully, I want you to notice how Jonah's trouble increased with mountain intensity. I mean, it just continued. He got into the boat, there, there was waves. As the waves begin to overflow, they begin to toss, toss him out into the sea. Once he's in the sea, guess what? Here comes a great fish. So the more he began to walk in this road of disobedience and, and distrust in God, the troubles of his life begin to mount upon, mount upon, mount upon each other. Until for, uh, chapter 2, we find him giving his testimony about his trouble and the Lord's gracious deliverance. So I want you to see something about his trouble. I want you to see these concerning things about his trouble. The first thing I want you to notice about it is the nature of his trouble. You see, we read this in Jonah chapter 1 verse 15 and also 17. Let me read it for you. It says, So they picked up Jonah and hurled him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. Look at verse 17. And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. You see, this man was cast into the sea. The prophet was thrown overboard. And then, as he's treading water, a great fish that the Lord caused to come by swallowed him up, surely in great trouble. He was in distress, my friends. I want you to notice this in three ways. First, he was in trouble physically. I mean, here he is. He's treading water. His body was affected by possibly drowning and then being swallowed up by a fish. You knew that if he was going to be able to survive that moment. Secondly, he was in trouble not just physically but mentally. Can you imagine what it would be like being in the, the hole of a great fish with no light coming in? All you hear are the different sounds that are coming from this fish's body and the outside sea. Can you imagine wrapping your mind mentally around the anguish that was going on? Okay, he survived being thrown over the board. Uh, he, he survived being swallowed up by a fish. But now, mentally, can you imagine the anguish that he was going through? But thirdly, his trouble wasn't just a physical trouble. And it wasn't just a mental trouble. But he had a spiritual trouble as well. Why? For he was out of touch with God. 
He rebelled against the will of the Lord. He rebelled, he, he rebelled against the very plan. And it was a very specific plan. You remember a couple of weeks ago, we prayed, Oh Lord, show me your will that I may go in that will. Listen, if we're going to pray, God, show me your will. If we're going to say, teach me your ways. And God begins to do it. Listen, we don't need to do what Jonah did and distrust God and, and rebel against God. Because in those moments, we are setting ourselves up for trouble. How does your trouble compare to Jonah's? Have you looked at what you're going through right now? Maybe it's something that you caused in your life because of rebellion or distrust from God. Or maybe you just simply have just failed to lean upon him. And because of that, you leaned on your own understanding. And when you leaned on your own understanding, you created a mess like Abraham did for his life. How does your trouble compare to Jonah? But you see, Jonah's trouble, also, there was an intensity to it. You see, it was very severe. It was a very severe trouble. And we learned this in verse 2 of his prayer. He said, my distress. And again, he goes into verse 2, from the depths of the grave, or Sheol, as we read in the ESV. Then he also talks about the currents swirled about him and to sweep over him. And he even talked about in verse 7 that the life was ebbing away from him. He was in an intense situation in his life. This was no ordinary trial. This was a dire trial. It was so overwhelming to him that he was in a place of do or die. How does, this, how does your trouble compare with the severity of Jonah's trouble? Do you feel like that if you go any further in this trouble that it will overtake you? Do, do you feel like if anything else begins to press, the pressure of this trial begins to press on you, it's going to overtake you? My friends, this is why we need to learn from Jonah. Because Jonah was in a severity of, of trouble. It was an intense trouble. Let us listen to it. But here's the reason for his trouble. Jonah had disobeyed and distrusted God, and in this he had committed a grievous or grievous sin against the Lord. This was the very reason why Jonah was in the predicament that he was in. This is what caused Jonah's situation. God's sovereignty and activity are very clearly brought out in the prophecy that God wanted Jonah to. He said, go to Nineveh. Go to the place that you do not like. Go to the people that you don't like and give this word that if they will repent, I will have mercy upon them. But if they don't repent, there, there will be destruction for their life. I mean, it was clear. There was a cut and dry, black and white situation. There was no interpretation or or misleading by Jonah's uh, uh, or, or, or uh, uh, in his interpretation of what God wanted him to do. It was cut and dry. It was noticeable. But I also want you to notice in Jonah chapter 2 verse 3 that the attributes of the storm and the waves and the trials were from the Lord. He said it was you, O oh God, that caused these things to come into my life. God had brought about this great trial as a chastening to Jonah as he lovingly and sanctifying purpose to break the will and to break the hard-headedness and the self-will of the prophet. There are times, I don't know if you're like me, but there are times in my life that I get such a, a, a focus on doing what I want to do that I push out God's will. I push out God's voice. And there are times that God has to get me on my knees so that I can hear his voice. That's what took place with Jonah. Jonah needed to hear the direct voice of God saying, Jonah, the direction in which you are going is not my will for your life. And so troubles came and trials came and, and disheartening moments came to Jonah because the Lord loved him. And the Lord was calling him back to him. The Lord was redeeming Jonah back to his situation and to his life. You see, if you are in trouble, it does not follow that this is due to a deliberate and disobedient or distrust. But it could be. It could very well be that 
that the situation that you're in today, I'm not talking about this virus situation, but there are other things that are going on that has risen up in your life that we have caused because we have completely rebelled against God. Only you can know these things. Only you can answer that question with an assurance and a certainty. Is God's hand heavy upon you because of some willful disobedience? Ask yourself that. We should do what Jonah did. What did he do? He prayed. When we are in the midst of our distress, we need to pray. You see, Jonah's prayer was very urgent. It is important to, to look at, at the 17th uh, verse of chapter 1 and the first verse of chapter 2. Jonah chapter 1 verse 17 says this, And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Jonah chapter 2 verse 1 says this, Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish. How urgent this man's prayer was. And he only made this prayer to the Lord when he really was in a tight fix. Oh, my friends, it took him not in a rocking ship that was going to be overtaken by the sea, the storms of the sea. And you would have think it was in that moment that he would have called to the Lord. You would have thought it would have been in the moment when he had fallen in, or been thrown into the, to the sea. But it was in the moment where he had nowhere else to go. It was in the middle of the belly of the fish that he cried to the Lord. I want us to look at Psalms 107. Turn there if you will. Go to Psalms 107 and I want you to look at some of these verses that I want to bring to your attention. Psalms chapter 107. Let's start with verse 6. Verse 6 says this, Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. Jump down to verse 13. He says this, Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. Go down a little further in verse 19 of the same chapter of Psalms 107. The scripture says, Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And what does it say? And he delivered them from their distress. Look at this. God wants to deliver you from your distress. Cry to the Lord. Cry to the Lord like Jonah did. Cry out in times of trouble and ask God to move and to minister to your life in a special way. I want you to look at, at Jonah's prayer and I want you to notice a couple of things. The first thing I want you to notice is the place of his praying. You see, we get this in Jonah chapter 2 verse 1 that, that, that it was a very strange place. It was a very strange prayer chamber. He was in the belly of the fish of that God calls to come into his life. In Daniel chapter 6, we see Daniel prayed to God in his house. Peter prayed on the rooftop in Acts chapter 10. Lydia in Acts chapter 16 prayed by the riverside. Paul, when he prayed unto the Lord, he prayed in the middle of prison. Jesus himself was on a mountaintop when he called out to the Lord. And Jonah was in the middle of the belly of a fish. You know what this means? This means... That when you are in need of a touch from God and you call out to Him in prayer, it doesn't matter where you're at. There might be some that are watching me tonight saying this, if I could just get to church, I could go down to the altar and I can cry out to God. Can I tell you something, my friends? I don't know how much longer we'll be away from this church house building. But what I do know is this, that the Bible guarantees to us that we can call upon the name of the Lord anywhere we are at. If you're in your living room, you could cry out to the Lord. If you're in your bedroom, you could cry out to the Lord. If you're out in the field plowing away and working in your workplace and you need to cry out to the Lord, He will meet you right there. It doesn't matter where you're at. You can make it a prayer chamber. I want you to also notice the faith in His praying. See, here is something extremely important about the prayer that, uh, of God to deliver you from your trouble. Jonah was God's servant. Did you catch that? Jonah was God's servant in spite of the fact that he disobeyed God. You see, he knew that the Lord would hear his prayer if he was offered sincerely, penitently, and with confession and in faith. 
His prayer was God-directed. Can I tell you something, my friends? There is no one in this world that can deliver you from your troubles than God Himself. He is the only one that has the ability to break the strongholds of your life. Cry out to God. Don't cry out to your neighbor. Don't cry out to your friend down the street. Cry out to God. Don't cry out to the government. For the government themselves cannot deliver you in times of distress. It is only God who can overshadow you and deliver you from your distress. He knew that the Lord would hear his prayer if it was offered with sincerity. My friends, he knew it. He had a confidence in God. And so he offered his prayer in faith. It was offered in the light of what God was going to do for him. He knew that he was calling upon a merciful God. He knew that he was calling out to a gracious God. My friends, you have a good father. You have a father that loves you. You have a father that cares for you. You have a father that wants what's best for you. My friends, I don't care where you find yourself at. I don't care if you feel like you have just rebelled against God and spat in his face. My friends, hear me today. Your God loves you and he wants to deliver you. So cry out to him in your discret, in dis, uh, distress and God will meet you right where you're at. Build up your confidence. Build up your faith in your God because your God wants to meet you in your trouble today. When Jonah prayed, the rejoiced, uh, he rejoiced in the fact that salvation comes from the Lord. There is no one else, my friends, that can deliver you from the deepest, darkest troubles of your life. And when you call out to God, we need to worship Him and celebrate and to praise Him. For He is the only one, my God, my friends, that can bring salvation to your life. And because salvation is coming to your house, and because salvation is coming to your life, I challenge you right now in this this very moment to lift up your hands and to tell him thank you and, and to be grateful and to rejoice because salvation's come into your house and he's going to deliver you from the moments of your trouble and distress. All appearance was against him and he was still in the midst of the fish's belly, but God would get him out. You might still be in the heap of your mess. You might still be in the heat of the, fury, of the fiery furnace of your life. But can I tell you something? Even if your surroundings still look unfavorable, rejoice in knowing that God is making a way out. I want you to look at the answer to his praying. You see, we get this in Jonah chapter 2 verse 10. And what a great answer it was. The Bible says that once he cried out to the Lord that the fish swam up to the, uh, to the shore and spitted him out. It was immediate. It was dramatic. And it was miraculous. God is very gracious. In spite of our disobedience, he is still good to us, my friend. Look at what the psalmist says in one, uh, 145, verse 8 and 9. He says that the Lord is gracious and he's merciful. He's slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. For the Lord is good to all and his mercy is over all that he has made. We serve a good God, my friends. He is a gracious God. But most of all, God's grace and God's graciousness are seen in this next point. This is my last point tonight is this, that Jonah, he got a second chance. What a wonderful words that are recorded in Jonah chapter 3 verse 1. Let me read them to you. It says this, Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Listen, he was given a second chance after his disobedience. So did Paul, uh, Peter. Peter got a second chance after his denial. Thomas, after he heard of, of the other disciples talking about they've seen Jesus, he still doubted, and yet God and Jesus still blessed him with a second chance. John Mark got a second chance after his desertion from Paul. And yet in the, in the grand scheme of things, God gave him another chance in ministry. There is a second chance for you. If you will come back to the Lord, if you will give penance, and you will have faith and confidence in God, what do we see about Jonah's second chance? Well, it was unexpected. You see, it was certainly more than he could ever uh, could hope for. 
You see, he believed God would deliver him. But could God ever use him again? He thought, my goodness, I know God can deliver me from this fish. But why? Why would he use me in spite of my disobedience? There are some that are watching this right now. You need to hear me today. Just because you disobeyed God and just because you rebelled against the will of the Lord, that doesn't mean that God has thrown you to the wayside. No matter of fact, God wants to use the troubles and the mess of your life to be a story of redemption that he can use. He hasn't thrown you to the wayside. You're not put into the wastebasket, my friends. No, there's still something special inside you. God still sees purpose within the trouble and the mess of your life, and he wants wants to use you. Oh, my friends, hear me today. God has not overlooked you. Matter of fact, he's got his eye on you right now. Someone needed to hear that this evening. Also, look at this second chance. It was undeserved. How completely undeserved it was for Jonah and how completely undeserving we are for the Lord's gracious dealings with us. Listen, we don't deserve it, but that's what makes him a good God. We don't deserve it, but that's what makes him a gracious God. Listen, grace is unmerited favor. You can't earn it. You can't earn the favor of God. God loves you so much, and it was also unequivocal. You see, there was no doubt about it. It seemed too good to be true, but can I tell you something? It was true. So Jonah got out of his trouble. And if your trouble has come upon you because of disobedience and distrust and lack of faith in God, you may get out of your trouble and back into the plan and the purpose that God has in store for your life. Look at 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verse 9. It says this, For if you return to the Lord, your brothers and your children will find compassion with their captors and return to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you if you return to him. Let me finish this with this one last verse, Joel chapter 2. Verse 12 and 13, yet even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning, and rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and he is merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. My friends, God wants to deliver you from your troubles. He wants to deliver you and pick you up out of your distress. If you'll just trust in Him and call upon Him and return to Him, He will bring you out of your troubles. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that we have encouragement today by the prophet Jonah. Lord, that you see us and you understand where we're at and that you love us in spite of our disobedience and in spite of our distrust in you, Lord. And I just pray that if there are those that are watching today and listening today that are finding themselves in this situation, I pray, oh God, that you will meet them right where they're at and pull them out of the miry clay and put them on, on the rock that will be firm and solid under your power. Father, I pray that you give them second chance chance that they can see that there is still value in them, God, because you see it. And I pray in Jesus' name that they will arise to the occasion, uh, uh, occasion, Lord, that you will rise to the occasion, I pray in Jesus' name. Father, bless your people, I pray. Let them sense your presence and your forgiving grace in a powerful, powerful way this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Stay faithful to God. Stay encouraged today. God sees you right where you're at. You're on his radar. He loves you. He's merciful. He's gracious. And he will be right there where you're at. We love you. If you need anything, get in touch with us. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.